Welcome to Hello Nigeria. We're joined by our special guest of the day. We thought that'd be nice to give you a very special weekend gift. And we decided that all the way from Namibia, we would fly in the real Femi into Nigeria so that he can have he can have an experience of all that goes on in his mind. Also, people put, up, put down comments in his comment section asking, how do you think, how does your mind work? Today, you'll find out. We're joined by Femi Olabi, also known as the real Femi. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. It's Welcome, to have you Femi. Again. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm sure you get this question all the time. How does your mind work? I see it in your comment section. People say, how does this guy <laughs> think? How does your mind work? Please tell us, Femi. On behalf of all your loyal fans, how does your mind work? Well, I mean, the first thing is to is to get a topic that you know you want to to portray or you want to put across, and then you know you need to then you know break it down and see the best way to deliver it, you know, and you know in your own in your own style. So, um, how my mind works, um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's based on my comedic influences. You know, people I've watched growing up and, you know, the kind of things that I enjoy as comedy, okay. you know, growing up. So, yeah. Okay, so I, I've seen you outside here. I've seen you in a lot of places. And you're usually quiet and all, looking like this. At some point, somebody comes to say, oh, Femi, what's up? Yeah. And then I imagine you being all quiet like that in public. And then the same person is the one imitating the baby thing, blah, 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 <laughs> blah, in a certain skit. So yeah. you moved from practically shooting skits to now mm -hmm. doing like mimicking skits right. all by yourself. Right. How did you move from there to that from that point to that point? To mimicking skits. Yeah, to okay. mimicking skits. Um, the thing is if you follow me and you watch my my or if you follow my brand, so to speak, you see that I I try to I try to dabble in different um, areas of comedy. So mimicking is one of them. So mimicking is something that I've I've done for a while. And um, I, I, f I feel like a lot of people enjoy it, you know, when, you, when they're used to a certain thing or when, when something has trended for a while and then you, you now um, do your own version of it or you put your own, own spin to, to the video. You know, it's, it's, a lot of people enjoy that, so that's why. And I enjoy doing it myself, so. <laughs> All right. We right. enjoy watching these videos as well, but we want to give you an insight into just how crazy the real family can be on Instagram. So check out this video. When we come back, we'll be discussing the, top, the topic, the creative process of making a skit. So enjoy. And I hope that you would believe him as he'll be sharing with us the creative process of making a skit. We're joined by Femi Owolabi. I wanted to call your middle name that you used to put before on Instagram. <laughs> Femi Owolabi, a.k.a. the real Femi. And he's sharing with us, you know, all that happens behind the scenes. We see the finished product or the finished work. Right. What we want to know is the creative process, starting from your costumes. I want to make reference to the skit that just played, the Spider-Man skit. Now, you have several hilarious skits where you're making use of women's weaves, where you're having um, colored blonde hair. Right. How do you fish for your costumes? Do you actually go shopping or do you borrow from your siblings? Mm -hmm. How does that work? Well, first of all, I, I think I have to look and see what's around me. So if I don't, and I have the idea of what I want to, to portray. So if I don't have it, then yes, I go shopping. Because in the end, I think it's worth it, you know, if, if um, you know, it comes across as I want it to. So it's worth it to, so you go to spend to the mall some money. With your trolley. Yes, I do. Especially the Spider-Man skit that you just watched. I went to a shop. I won't mean mention the name, but yeah, they, they sell kids stuff. So I went particularly to ask for a Spider-Man costume. They didn't have a Spider-Man costume, so <laughs> what I was wearing there was a Spider-Man towel and the the glasses. So I, when I put it together, it looked like Spider-Man. So I thought, okay, this would be perfect, and to add to the comical part of it. Okay, so every time you have to create a skit, yes. does it have to be about something trending? Or do you just actually, because sometimes some of your skits are mirroring on societal issues, which yes. is what I enjoy sometimes. Yes. You know, so it's not about what is trending. Does it always have to be about what is trending? Or can you talk about any other thing that is important that you want to use in passing a message, of course, through comedy? Right. Um, it doesn't have to be um, topics that are trending. It could be um, just a character you create that... Um, um, looks at topics that, you know, we all, things that we all experienced growing up, for example, which I think um, a lot of the skits on, int on the internet or Instagram are about. So the kind of things like, you know, African parents and, you know, the relationship with their kids and the type of things they would say, you know, so you could, you know, do something about that. Um, trending topics as well. I mean, trending topics, I think those are the ones that will probably get the most 
um, engagement mm. because it's something that everyone is familiar with at the time. So, yeah. All right. I want to make reference to the second video we watched where you make the accent of a Zimbabwean yes. and, and, and a British person, right? Yes. Let's talk about the accents. You have, yes. How many accents do you think you can comfortably do? Um, probably about six or seven or so, yeah. And did learning. you have to travel to these places? What informs your being able to deliver these accents? I think it's because of where I live. Um, there are a lot of, I, in that video I was doing a Zimbabwean accent and Zimbabwe is in Southern Africa. So I, I live in a Southern African country and there are a lot of, you know, Southern Africans um, where I live, that's Namibia. So um, I get to interact with them. And so I learn the way they speak and, you know, certain intonations and the way they pronounce certain words. So I use that, you know, as a basis for my, my comment. Now, since flowing from that, you have a huge following on social media. Are there times when a certain tribe doesn't take the joke as the joke should be? So you're mimicking an accent. You know, you do several um, funny uh, parodies. You're mm -hmm. doing about Kenyan movie trailers, and it's hilarious to watch. But in your comment section, have you ever gotten attacked by members of that tribe you know, saying that you're, 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 you're defaming their tribe, you know, if that, if that uh, works. But have you ever gotten attacked by members of, the, of those tribes who don't take it as a joke that you are making it into? Yeah. I, every time I do a skit that has to do with accents, <laughs> people from that, um, from that tribe or from that country always, always attack me. <laughs> and <laughs> wow. I have to defend myself, you know, and tell them that... Um, I'm not attacking them as you know a nation or as a tribe. Mm. I'm just mimicking what could happen in you know a real life situation. So you could have like a um, you know a South African, for example, or a Zimbabwean with a very heavy accent talking to someone from England or someone from the U.S. Mm. and they might have problems understanding each other because of the way they pronounce things or because of how heavy, heavy the other person's accent is. So I'm just taking a you know. <laughs> I'm just taking a, what might be a real life situation and mm. putting it on camera. And, you know, people find it amusing. I'm, I find it amusing myself because um, I find it interesting how, peop, how, how there's one word and different people pronounce it differently. E.g., pasta, and pasta. Exactly. <laughs> like the Ghanaians say pasta, you know, yeah. when they mean pasta. But pasta is something, pasta Else. means something to, you know, other people as well. So you can play on that. Okay. Yeah. So now, still on attack, you stay in a South African country. Yes. And sometimes I've, I've actually gone through your comment section when, when you create jokes about a Nigerian situation. Yes. And somebody writes something like, Uncle, you are not in Nigeria. You don't know the story more than us. <laughs> and there's some people go ahead to give you an example yes. of what they feel is the true picture of what is happening concerning what you just made a skit about. Right. Now, it's supposed to be on a lighter mode, but right. some people also just take it on. You don't know the real story. That's yeah, not what it means. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever feel, you know, give yourself a chance to apologize to such a person? Or do you have to now go and do something else to counter such opinions? Well, um, I just like to say that before I do my, before I do a skit about a certain topic, I, I actually do some research. I make sure to, mm. I make sure I do some research on that topic, you know, before I, you know, go out and, you know, you know, give a miss, you know, um, and do this something like this, act, this, yeah. Yeah, this misrepresentation of the, mm. of, the, of the topic. So I do my research and I make sure that is, um, you know, is uh, something that I've, I've read on about. So when people come to me with statements like that, you know, I'll just tell them that, you know, the, but this is how it is or this is how I saw the news story. Um, and when I see something on social media, I don't just, you know, uh, take what I see there. You know, I go further and, you know, watch news stories or stuff like that. So... That's how I handle it. If I do make a mistake, then you know, I can come out and say, yes, I made a mistake, I'm sorry. I'll do something to counter it, like you said. But how do you handle social media criticism, though? Um, in the beginning, I didn't handle it so well. But I think over time, you know, I got to learn that you can't hide away from these things. They'll always be there. You always get criticized for whatever you do, you know, whatever industry you're in. So um, I think the quicker I learned to deal with it, the better it was for me. Because um, if I didn't, then it's easy to you know, take these things to heart and then go into depression and stuff like that. So um, I just learned to, where I feel I'm wrong, I will accept the criticism, you know, but I mean, if it's just random criticism and stuff like that, saying you're not funny or things like that, I just ignore. 
Sometimes I'll, I'll still come back to this conversation because I think it's very important that we look at the health aspect of social media. I mean, I saw a post recently that says Instagram is plan planning to um, blow out or to take out take out the likes and you know the adver uh, sorry the likes and the comments. They, they refuse to show them just to help mm. with mental health. But we'll go on a quick advert break or uh, a quick break. And when we come back, the real family will still be in the studio. We'll be asking some more questions with regards to understanding the creative process behind making a skit and going deeper to look at the mental health of our online comedians. Please on the way. You're welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now, in case you're just tuning in, we've been having a very interesting conversation, understanding the creative process of creating a skit, and we've been joined by Femi Owolabi, popularly known as The Real Femi. Thank you for joining us again. Now, before we went on the break, we've touched on several aspects of creating a skit. You know, we've talked about the costume, the ideas. Now, let's break it down, the creative process. When the real family wants to shoot an average one-minute skit, what does it entail? Okay, so um, it depends on what the type of skit is and how many scenes, you know, talking like a movie director, but how many scenes you have in the skit. So you can have the, um, the one you just record with your, your front camera, and you know what? What the challenge there is doing takes over and over again. So even you know as simple as it is, um, the, you know it takes quite a, a, a long time to to get the final product. Um, but when there when there's so many scenes, it gets it really gets um, it really gets tedious to to put everything together. So um, the Spider-Man skit that you just saw. I don't know, I think there are about four or five scenes in that skit. But each scene, you would have to shoot like, I don't know how many times, 10 times or whatever it is, just mm. to get it right, you know, just to get it right. And then, once they're done, then you have to edit and now put things together. So you find yourself taking, um, apart from, you know, the first, the first time you shot the scene to, you know, the third time you shot the scene and everything and putting it together. So the whole process, you know, might take you six, seven hours. Finally, get everything together. And you have a nine to five. <laughs> okay, we'll come back to that. But let's take a look. We have another video of Femi. Now he's also a professional documentary filmmaker, and this time around, he's talking about wigs and waves. So check out this kid that the real Femi did, and when we we'll come back, we'll be speaking some more with him. I see what you did there, <laughs> hereditary, aerodynamics, uh, wig. You just really played with her. Now, that's, you also had different characters. You had the doctor, yes. you had the woman who was giving her witness or her testimony yes. with her blurred face. Yes. You know, you had the intruder, the human man that walked in and saw the human woman without her wig. <laughs> so on the average, how long do you take it to shoot that video? Um, if you can remember. Yeah, shooting the video itself uh, probably took about, you know, an hour, an hour, 30 minutes. Um, editing, three hours or so. So, um do you do the editing yourself? I do the editing myself, and I do the shooting myself as well. Okay, so well, let's talk yeah. about equipment and costs. Now, yes. that's one, uh, it's usually an issue. So I, I even, we've had other online sensations come here on Hello Nigeria. Some said it started with phones, right. you know, mobile phones, and then they now had to, the brand got better, right. and then they could get a uh, known uh, director to now shoot, right. you know, the yes. skit fully. So for you, did you start like that? Or were you well equipped from the beginning? No. And I if wasn't. you were, mm -hmm. how better have you gotten now? And then mm -hmm. for cost, on average, how much does it cost you to do one skit on average? Okay. So when I started, I used to use very interesting. I used to use my laptop's camera. So that was the very poorest of, of qualities. And I would do it in my room. And you know, I didn't really know anything about editing and all of that. So I just use a basic. Uh, basic softwares, but um, as time went on, I moved to a tablet that was um, a BlackBerry tablet uh, back then, and then I moved to my phone. Now, phones are these days are really really good for shooting skits. You don't you don't really need a super you know duper camera, but um, if you want to improve your quality, like you said, you know get directors and everything, then you know you go big in that sense. So um, right now I have a camera, or like a proper professional camera, I guess. Um, that I'm using to do my skits. So my, my video quality has gotten better mm. since then. So um, in terms of costs, well, you'd be looking at, um, well, ha I guess how much you you bought the camera for, and because you would have to buy things like um, tripods and all of that. But I mean, over time, that will 
that will balance itself out. Okay. I guess. Mm. Now, um, let you, you mentioned something earlier about you shooting your videos yourself. Yes. How taxing is that, or how tasking rather is that, that you have to be the cameraman and you have mm -hmm. to be the subject of mm -hmm. focus? You know, how do you go about it? Um, it's 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 not easy, I must say. Um, but I think the advantage is that um, it's just you, and you can do whatever you want. You don't have someone else. You know, telling you what to do or what they, you know, what they don't like. Um, but if you have someone be behind the camera, I think it's better because um, they're able to get certain shots in the in the scene. You know that because if you're alone, you'd have to run behind the camera, see what is in the shot, then go in front of the camera, record. Which is exactly what you do. Which is what I do. So um, you know, and I can't um, get different um, shots at the same time. And have you had like any that. accidents in this process? In process of doing that. <laughs> Uh, well, I've had accidents. I've had accidents with the equipment. You know, I've had the equipment falling over and things like that. So, um, yeah. Okay. That's so, it. as a comedian, who are the um, people you look up to in the comedian space? Like, as a comedian in Nigeria, your Nigerian counterparts that you look up to, and well, like you admire even, their work. Yes, you? those you admire their work, even in the international scene. Mm -hmm. Who? Um, okay. So earlier on, um, growing up, I you know I watched I watched a lot of late night comedy shows, late night talk shows. So, you know, they do, you know, skits and all those things. I think that that's where I get my um, comedic inspiration. You know, yeah, inspiration from. So people like um, Jay Leno, Conan O'Brien, um, Steve, I forgot his surname, but Harvey? He, no, not Steve Harvey. Okay. Um, <laughs> Steve, I forgot his surname, but he, mm. they do late night, um, late night talk shows mm. um, and they're comedians. Um, in the Nigerian space, you know, um, you know the likes of Basket Mount, Bobby, um, you know, Kenny Black, one of those people, and you know, on on online, you know, so to speak, mm -hmm. you have you know the usual, Maraji, uh, Lenu, MC Livey, you know, Brother Shaggy, all of them are doing well. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Final words, Femi, for someone who is about to start, you know, a career in, who has always wanted to put out content, yeah. but they are scared because they're thinking, you know, will they accept my content? Will they like my content? What would you say to an aspiring social media um, comedian? Um, I think the first thing is um, don't try to be like anyone else. I know, I know it's cliche. Everyone will tell you that, but that is key. Trust me. Try to be yourself. Um, um, Bring your point across in your own way. Don't don't copy. You know. Don't don't try to be like. You know. You might you might idolize or have people as your inspiration, but don't ever try to be like them. I think the minute you try to be like them, people will sense that, and you know, they just call you a copycat or stuff like that. So if you original, origin originality is key in that sense. Yeah. They say that trying to be everyone else is the hardest thing. It's easier mm -hmm. to be yourself because everyone else is taken. Thank you so much, The Real Family, for joining us. Thank, Thank you for having me. And we wish you all the best in your career path, even as you go back to Namibia, juggling your 9 to 5 and comedy, which is amazing. To enjoy more of this, our Ubunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.